here we are. This could be first or last one of these types of videos, who knows. Uh, we've come out, or I've come out, say we, to have a look at this uh, merger working behind me. It belongs to J.H. Willis, or Josh Willis, who's driving. And yeah, it's quite an impressive piece of kit, really. Uh, obviously, it's not a machine for everyone, but for certain applications and for certain crop types, sorry, I'm juggling GoPros under me, aren't I? And for certain crop types, it could be a winner. Uh, certainly from what Josh is doing this morning, which is farmer's whole crop, which has been mown with a standard disc mower and then left to wilt. And we've had a variety of crops. So the first field was triticale, uh, second field was triticale with lucerne that had been um, sown afterwards and this is mostly lucerne that's been under sown with grass I think uh, I think this is probably the less least successful of the of the fields um, because it's quite thin on the ground but it does show the versatility of the coon machine because over in the far field where it was very uh, triticale and that the triticale had come through well he was putting seven into one uh, so going up one side and back down the other and then in the other field over there which had a good crop of lucerne that was quite heavy he just put three into one so gone down and merged both swaths into the middle and that worked well because there was enough crop there that it wasn't going to overload the forager and leave uh, an untidy swath behind. But here, in this field, uh, there's some, be some footage of it working where he's been putting seven into one. Uh, again, like I just said, here he goes past now. And uh, there he goes. Okay, so the first thing we'll notice about the merger is forward speed. Josh is probably doing about 10 miles an hour here, I would say, comfortably. Uh, making a really clean job, clean sweep. It's not a massive crop, but the merger is more than able to uh, pick everything up at the speed he's going. Still creating a nice uniform swath. So approaching the headland. Just like a two rotor rake really. Um, if the forage harvest hasn't taken the headlands off already, it just, just needs to slow down a little bit. When the merger is lifted to its top headland position, it slows down. You can see the tines slowing down and the belt slow down. And then when it drops back into work, you can see everything speeds up to full speed and he's off again. So he's obviously centre lining here, so this is making a 10.95 metre pass using the full width of the merger and leaving a big swath in the middle, the widest he can for the forager. Obviously that's got a 3 metre pickup, so that's not a problem. Okay, flying over to the 8300i here, 495 horsepower machine, uh, you can see that the roller crop press is smoothing out some lumps there but there's nothing in it to cause the crop press to lift up and bounce so the swath must be just uh, quite fluffy, lots of air pockets in there perhaps. Um, you can see what's coming out of the chute, it's nice and smooth. It's not causing the machine to bog or making it work uh, hard in, in lumpy conditions.
Okay, so riding on with the merger here, Josh is not centre lining anymore, he's pushing everything across to one side, so there'd be two merger units are closed up so there's no gap in the middle and what that creates is now one 8.85 meter working width so when he comes back down the other side he's getting just over 17 meters of, of crop into one it's quite light so you can see that it's, it's worth doing that so the forager isn't chasing uh, chasing crop You can also see here that Josh is running on the crop with his tractor, obviously that's unavoidable when you're pulling a machine like this, but there's nothing left behind either, it seems to be picking it up even though it's a it's a 215R so it's not a small tractor, and you can see the wheelings but it's, it's doing a clean job of picking it up, which sometimes can be a bit of a struggle. Um, if you've got a crop that, that's quite light here, you don't want to be digging into the ground too much with a, with a rake or something similar to lift that out of the ground. From the ground here we can see the merger coming towards us. Uh, Josh has got that little flap sticking up in the air. That's to control the width of the swath that you're leaving behind if you making rows for a baler or a smaller machine. Obviously the forager's got a three meter pickup so that's not necessary. Looking at the belts here, there's just this little red strip behind the stripper bars. Uh, Josh said he's had to remove that in certain crops just to stop the, the, the crop hanging in the back of the time bands there. So that's something worth knowing. The coon's got five rows of tines and each 8.85 meter unit is split so there's actually 10 tine bars behind the strippers there so you get a centre carrier bearing in the middle just to take the stress off the whole thing. Underneath we've got the skids which I found some information somewhere but I haven't been able to find it again. I think these carry about 60 to 70 kilos of weight to follow the ground. There is a plastic uh, like a nylon nylatron material which you can put on the skids so if you're in a high abrasive um, land type sandy conditions or lots of stones uh, that can just save the skids a little bit of wear like a, a disposable skid protector I guess. Here are the springs which transfer the weight of the machine onto the skids so they're, they're carrying most of the weight but they just allow 60 to 70 kilos onto the skids to follow the contours of the ground. At the headstock here we've got PTO drive which drives all of your hydraulic function on the machine in terms of motors and there's a damper on uh, link arm there just to smooth out any oscillations between the tractor and the machine. The merger is 1000 PTO or 750 as an option if you spec it from new. Inside the cab we've got the control pad for the merger. This has some presets on the top, so if you're centre line or you want to put everything across to one side or you want to shift or turn swaths for drying, this is where it happens. Uh, up and down is just uh, clicking a, a spill valve. So we're in the cab here with Josh. He's doing the outsides of this field, putting it uh, down the middle of the merger. Um, quite a few corners, lots of bends on the uh, on the outside of this field, so he's uh, having to work quite hard. But uh, you can just see that he's clicking the spill valves just to lift the machine up and down in and out of work. Okay, well I think that's all there is to say about the merger. Um, the response from Willis has been positive. They've contracted with it as well as done their own work, so rowing up in front of a crone big pack baler in straw sometimes sometimes turning straw over with it when it's been rained on to dry out um, they also run a John Deere uh, combi baler round baler which uh, is another task for the for the merger to go ahead of like I said at the start of the video this isn't the machine for everybody 
your high horsepower forager uses, yes, it'll stay in front in heavy crops, but when things get later on in the season, you'd probably struggle and ultimately then restrict the output from the forage harvester. But uh, if you're running balers, forage wagons, yeah, it's probably going to be a versatile piece of kit to use on a farm or contracting business. And for handling crops like lucerne, which obviously you don't want to lose the leaf of, um, so the rake just bashes that to pieces. And cereal hole crops that are mown rather than direct cut, um, it's, it's going to handle those brilliantly and leave you with a, a swath that you can pick up with a forage harvester or even a forage wagon or a baler. So to wrap up, um, feedback on the Merge Max 1090 from Willis's has been really positive. Uh, they've gotten really well with the machine. Versatility in front of forage harvesters, in front of balers. Um, merging Lucerne for certain customers who've got a lot of that on the ground uh, as, as the customer in the video. And the only negatives really of that that red strip that sits behind the time bands where they, they've had in wetter crops they had a bit of an issue with it clogging that was just lodging behind the time bands in front of that red strip and, and causing the blockage um, a belt roller bearing failure as well which failed but again not a huge amount of downtime or anything detrimental um, the only thing that Josh had really pointed out about the operation of the merger was that if you see something that you're going to have to stop for you have to be preemptive. You can't just pull up to it and stop. You just have a big lump of crop in the middle of the belts or at one end. You need to lift out while you're still moving. So you've got to keep your eyes peeled. If there's any reason, you might have to stop. Try and lift the machine out of work as you're still moving forward so you don't end up with that big lump of crop. Okay, well, I think I've said all there is to say about the machine. It's been quite interesting, quite a hypnotic thing to watch. So just time for some music to footage, gratuitous track direction. Enjoy, thank you.
as always I'm going to have to get used to saying uh, if you've enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up uh, if you've got any constructive feedback please leave it in the comments uh, if you want to ask any questions fire away comment rate and subscribe thank you very much for watching